So I'll clap and then you start. Okay, sure. You'll clap and I'll start. Looking at this one. Looking at this one. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my channel. No, oh, man. <laughs> I forgot the mic. <laughs> Let's let's we already started anyway. It's fine. We'll just continue as it goes Welcome to my channel street doctor back at it again and this time we are going to be dealing with a topic that a lot of people had an ask about so Before we go ahead with that I just want to say thank you for the support that you've been showing throughout and I just want to encourage whoever hasn't subscribed to subscribe in fact I don't understand people who haven't subscribed. There's a saying in our culture that says and it means um, you just need to subscribe you know right so today we're gonna be talking about the topic of STIs and the toilet seat and uh, I just want to clarify also that I have no opinion on social media issues I'm just here for the clinical aspect of everything so that's all I'm here for also I'm actually not much of a gynae fanatic but um, STIs are a thing that is quite common and most of us as doctors well all of us as doctors are actually trained on how to manage people with STIs and understand all of these controversies that are around them so yeah in the content when you're talking about STIs tends to be a bit graphic mostly so yeah I'm gonna try and censor as much as I can but spades are spades at the end of the day so that's what I'm going to go ahead and tell you so when we were in medical school I remember there was a time where we actually had somewhat of a belief that people can get STIs from toilet seats and uh, that was answered in class and uh, ever since then we have known that there's a very 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 low chance of a person getting an STI from sitting on a toilet seat so where did this whole opinion begin or where did this whole notion of people getting STIs from a toilet seat so there was a gentleman who in 1939 was a doctor to a patient who had broken both of her hip bones and that patient had gonorrhea and that person had been in bed for a very long time and the chances of them having had engaged into intimate affairs was quite low especially with such pain that they were having i mean like broken bones over here and engaging into passionate endeavors it doesn't normally work well so it so happened that the person was sharing the same urinal with another patient who had gonorrhea so that was the only way that the contact would have taken place and the urinals that are used that are shared on patient's beds are very um, up to, they, they come very close to a person they're not like a toilet seat where you sit and there's a huge hole that is touching nothing they are very close to where the private parts actually are and then there was another case also in 2003 of an eight-year-old child who was in a plane from Russia to Sydney the child was examined no signs of abuse no signs of anything basically and they discovered that um, it probably would have come from a toilet seat because she had flown at a time where STIs were very common in the city she was flying from in Russia so those are the two cases that have actually been documented to be suspected to have originated from people sharing um, relief utensils right now with all of that having been said there was a research that was done in 1979 where they took a sterile toilet seat and another sterile toilet seat so with the other one they took salt water they added gonorrhea bags they spread them on top and then with the other one they borrowed some discharge from <laughs> They borrowed some discharge from patients that were in the wards and the patients consented with their discharges. You see, the, the, the reason why I don't like gynae is because uh, it can be very gynae, gynae. So they took discharge from patients, they spread it on top of the toilet seats and then they looked for the outcomes. So on the one that had so, um, salt solutions on top, there were no bugs that were alive. On this one, on the other side, there were some bugs that are alive. So the outcomes of the test were that this side, they can be cultured and remain alive. And this, uh, so on this side with um, discharge, they can grow on the side with salt water, they can't grow. So another guy in 1979 following that did a similar study where they put 32 toilet seats, public seats now, public toilet seats and then they spread some stuff on top of them and they couldn't yield anything and then a follow-up study by the same person who did the same study did it in public toilets and they yielded nothing and all of these things around that have gotten the um, American Center of Disease Control and Prevention to come to the conclusion that toilet seats are not seen or recognized as mediums through which 
um, STIs can actually be gotten by people, you know? And think about this, you need to have the ideal environment for any bug to come into your body. Now let's look at toilet seats just a little bit close. It needs to be there right before you sit on the toilet seat. Number two, you need to sit with your organ on top of the, the, the area that is infected. Number three, it needs to be warm, right? And most of the times when a person is sitting on a toilet seat, none of their intimate parts get to sit on top of the toilet seat itself. So it doesn't happen. I mean, even with guys, um, unless you are tripod himself, but apart from that, um, it, it is not possible most of the times for a man who is sitting on a toilet seat to have um, their part or their lower appendage touching on the side of the toilet seat that would probably have been touched by something that is infective. But in all that has been said about that, it is possible to get an STI from not having sexual intercourse. There's a study that was published by Crusiti et al. in Zambia. So there were these girls who were sharing bath water. And as they were sharing bath water, they all had um, an STI. and. It was a bug called Trichomona vaginalis. It's a type of a bug that is more a parasite than a bacteria, right? And it stays a longer period of time outside than it does, um, but than other bugs do, right? So that's a possible spread for Trichomona. And also there was an old lady um, who was sharing towels with two of his, with two of her daughters, and then they also had gonorrhea. It was from the towels because both of those children were also shown to be virgins when they were tested, when they were asked um, in terms of history and all of that. What about pubic lice? Everybody's afraid of crabs and um, each and every time a person has got crabs or a partner of someone has got crabs, the other one usually assumes that they must have slept with someone. Okay, it's possible, highly possible. Most of the time, that is the medium through which they get to spread. But you do get some people getting um, crabs. I had a patient who got crabs um, because they were sharing a room with another person that has crabs. It was both male people who were not uh, that close intimately as far as they had related in the history and all of that and there are many cases of people who have gotten crabs like small children who are sharing beds with their parents or older people they do get crabs so they need to attach to hair they need to hold on to clothes when they come on top of a porcelain toilet seat they are not able to hold on and the second thing is that they need the warmth of a human being or whatever they bind onto. So they need warmth and they need blood. That is what they feed on. If there's no blood, there's no warmth, there's nowhere to hold onto, they don't survive. So that's crabs. And then what about STIs that can be transmitted even people, even with people who are wearing condoms? It's possible to get an STI while you are having protected sex. The reason behind that is because in as much as STIs spread because of fluids that are exchanged, sometimes it's just mere skin contact. Let's take herpes for example. The stuff that usually blisters on your mouth when you have a flu, that's herpes type 1. It's found here. Then there's herpes type 2. It's found somewhere there on people who actually have it. And um, because of people getting a little bit kinky nowadays, you, de you get to find type 1 down there and type 2 up there. So there's an intermingling of the types when it comes to this one. But it's possible to have it because it's literally on the side, on the skin. So the only way you would be protected is if the lesion of the herpes is covered by a condom. Then that's the only possible way that you can avoid it. And um, syphilis as well, it can spread because it's just skin contact. And then the bug that causes genital warts also is another one that can spread without um, while a person is having sex uh, that is protected. So most of the times people think because toilets are very dirty and filthy, they need to just sit there and squat. You know the drama that women <laughs> go through um, sitting on top of those toilet seats. You tell them to go to Virgin Active to exercise, they don't go. You tell them to exercise, they run a little bit, they don't want to do squats, even though squats are known to give very good muscles. They come to a public toilet, they squat hard. I mean, yeah, so when you squat on a toilet seat, one of the problems is that your muscles are not completely relaxed. When your muscles are not completely relaxed, you don't empty your bladder fully. Now, if your bladder is not completely emptied, one thing that can happen is that you will have that sensation that your bladder is not completely voided. And the second thing is that urine will tend to stagnate over there and urine that stays over a very long time and doesn't clear can be breeding ground for urinary tract infections now. Not STIs, urinary tract infections. So that's the problem. Number two, it worsens hemorrhoids because that squatting position can bring about a problem with the circulation of blood around that area and the veins that are lower down there can actually get to balloon and that is what basically hemorrhoids are. 
And another thing is that it can cause pelvic organ prolapse, whereby tissues that are supposed to be inside because of the propensity to squat that you have, they might pop out, right? So those are the problems that come with squatting. And the reality is that toilet seats are, in fact, cell phones are 10 times dirtier than toilet seats. There's another study that showed that. Yeah, smart people discovered that. And there's nothing much that you're actually avoiding. So you can sit on a public toilet. What can you do? Clean it. We are in the sanitizing phase right so because of that you always walk around with a sanitizer spray the thing wipe it off or better yet you can just op um, unroll tissue paper scatter it on the toilet seat sit on the to uh, on, on the tissue paper that works and another thing is that when people urinate or defecate or do whatever they're doing in the toilet seat when you're flushing some of the bubbles they tend to rise in the atmosphere that is why for example with covid it is um, said that it can spread in toilets because of the water aerosolizing whereby small particles of the water they don't necessarily become vapor they become tiny particles of water that can remain in the air for a very long time the reason why the toilet seat has got a lid is because you need to close it before you flush because if it is open those small particles can actually rise up and be on the edge of the toilet seat so for the sake of the other person that is going to use the same toilet seat just close it before you flush and another thing i mean you don't want to walk out um, in an environment that has got those small particles around while you're getting out after doing whatever you were supposed to do and sanitize your hands as much as possible after getting out of a toilet and also um, find other excuses when you get STIs. Um, toilet seats, um, not really much of a convincing one, you know, because even in that little girl that was eight years old, the suspicion was that because she's young and hygienic standards would not measure to those of an adult, it's highly possible that she touched the toilet seat and at some point she touched her organ when she was wiping or doing whatever that was supposed to be done when they're cleaning themselves. So clean hands, clean toilet seat and you sit down properly the chances are almost as much as falling pregnant from a toilet that has been utilized by a guy who is doing stuff and then all of that happens so yeah do that and most importantly please don't, don't forget to subscribe 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 and i'm going to be back with more of the other content for now i'm out cheers